21. The graph of 9x minus 10y equals 19 is translated down four units in the xy plane. What is the x-coordinate of the x-intercept of the resulting graph? Okay, some people when they see graph, they automatically think, let's go straight to Desmos. I do not recommend that on this one. I'll show you why in a little bit. So first things first, I have an x and a y here, so that's a line. There's no x squared, there's no square roots, there's nothing like that going on. This is just an x and a y, it's a line. So I want to put it into y equals mx plus b format so I can get a good idea of where it is and graph it easily. So to get that, <clears throat> excuse me, have that 9x minus 10y equals 19. I'm going to solve for y. Put everything else over on the right, y will be by itself. So first I'm going to move this 9x. So I'm going to subtract 9x from both sides. So I have negative 10y equals negative 9x plus 19. Now y is being multiplied by negative 10, so I'm going to divide by negative 10. I have to divide everything by negative 10. So I'm going to get just a y on the left and on the right, negative 9 over negative 10. I'm going to put this into a decimal form. That is 9 tenths but I'm going to write it as 0.9x. Same difference. You can leave it as a fraction if you'd like. It doesn't matter. You will get the same result. Then I have 19 over negative 10. That is negative 19 tenths or negative 1.9. That's how I'm going to write it. Okay, so now I have an idea of what this line is. It is a line. It has a slope of 0 0.9, very close to being a slope of 1. So if I do my quick little sketch, I'm going to give it a slope of about 1. And just as a refresher, that number by the x is where I got that slope, that 0 0.9. And then the negative 1.9 is my, uh, my y-intercept. So if I were to draw this kind of to scale, and I try to be more accurate than I normally am when I'm drawing graphs, then the y-intercept is going to be somewhere around there, and it's going to be close to a slope of 1. It's going to look something like that. Okay. Now it's going to be translated down four units. All right, I'm going to erase this work that we did up here. And I'm going to rewrite this line up at the top. 0.9x minus 1.9. Right, they love problems. The SAT College Board, the man, they love problems where you have to translate a function. Uh, sometimes it's a parabola, sometimes it's a line. They just love it. So here are a couple of quick sort of reminders of the most common ways to translate a function. For example, y equals x squared. And this is going to apply to all those functions, x cubed, x, x the fourth. It works on all of them. Um, and it it's also works on things like square root and stuff, but do a little extra research on those because it's a little kind of finicky what I'm about to tell you. The easiest ones to do this are going to be the, the x, x squared, x cubed, x to the fourth. And those are the most common, frankly, on the SAT. All right, so if I have a y equals x squared, and this is a rough, quick drawing, it looks something like that. If I want to move this parabola down, I want to translate it down by 3. What I do is I put negative 3 out here outside of this x squared. This little x squared stays by it itself. It's not touched. I put negative 3 on the outside. That is going to move that parabola down 3. If I want it to go up, let's say I wanted to go up 1, I put plus 1, and then this whole thing moves up 1, just like that. And it's always for the y, up and down, it's direct. You want it to go up, you add. You want it to go down, you subtract. Left or right, it goes in here with the x, and the squared goes outside. So this is what I mean by that. You're going to get a little parentheses squared goes outside, and then you're going to go left or right inside, but it's going to be the opposite this time. So if I want to go to the left 2, I want to add 2. I'm going towards the negative. Negative x, I add 2. It's the opposite. If I wanted to go to the right towards the positive x, a positive 4 maybe, then I would go over here and I would subtract 4. And you can combine these. 
So if I wanted to say, move this parabola, I wanted to move two to the right, and then I wanted to go, so like two to the right, and then down three, two to the right, down three. So I'm moving towards the positive X and I'm moving towards the negative Y, okay? To move towards the positive X, two, it is the opposite, it is minus two and it goes in here. Then to move down three, it goes on the outside, minus three. This is a good pattern to learn. It comes up again and again. It just does. Um, another little kind of basic things. If it is a negative, it's going to flip it. It's going to flip that function upside down. If it is, let's erase this and get a little more tidy here. Um, with y equals x squared and all these, if you put a number in front of it, if the number is greater than one, it's going to make it more narrow. If it is a fraction that is less than one, like one fourth, let's say something like that, it's going to make it wider. Those are the most common. That's what happens. All right. So this one is saying it's translated down four units. So going on what I just said, if you remember that, it's this number out here, the number that's outside the X. If you put a number in here with the X, like in a parentheses, and you're, you have the square or something on the outside, that's what's moving it left and right. This negative 1.9 on the outside, that's what's moving it up and down. And you can see right here, yeah, moved it down 1.9. There you go. So we want it to go down four more. We're going to subtract four from that number, and that's going to move it down four more. So my new line is going to be y equals 0.9x minus 5.9. That's my new line. Now, it says, what is the x-coordinate of the x-intercept of the resulting graph? So at this point, this first line doesn't matter anymore. This is the only line that counts. And they're wanting to know what's the x-intercept. The x-intercept is where it crosses the x-axis. What is the thing that all points on the x-axis have in common? It's that all of them, their y-coordinate is 0. So the way you find the x-intercept is you plug in 0 for y. And then you can solve for x. So that's what we're going to do. Solve this. I'm going to add 5.9 to both sides to get rid of it. So over on the left, and I wrote 0.59. It's late while I'm doing this. <laughs> so we have on the left 5.9 and 0.9x on the right. Don't make math videos when you're tired, kids. All right, so 0.9 times x equals 5.9. So to solve for x, I'm going to divide by 0 0.9. And I have that x on the right. And then 5.9 divided by 0 0.9. There's a couple different ways that, um, that you can write this. I'm going to look at my notes and see what all the different versions they had is acceptable. They said that they would accept 59 ninths. 6.5 repeating is another way. Those are both fine. They mean the same thing. You can input either one of those as your answer. Now, the reason that I said at the beginning that I don't think Desmos is a good idea for this, here's why. Because here's what happens. The red is our original line. 9x minus 10y equals 19. So it's very easy, I think, for someone to look at this and they see that x, um, excuse me, that y-intercept and that x-intercept. And they go, oh, if I put this down by 4, then that means this must go to the right 4. I've seen that mistake so many times. It just doesn't work. It only works, and this is so rare, if the slope of the line is 1. That's it. If you're saying if it goes down this many, it'll go to the left. Or if it was like a negative one, if it goes down, how much, um, you know, it's going to go to the right. Or if it goes down, it's going to go to the left. <sighs> That's the only case if the slope is one or negative one. How often does that happen? How often are they that nice when you get a slope of one or negative one? It doesn't happen. You know this. Any other time, it's not going to be the same change. Look at this right here. Here is the new line. I've gone ahead and graphed it. So it went from negative one point down, down by four to negative 5.9. Did that X intercept change by four? No, it did not. It was two and one ninth, and now it's six and five ninths. 
Hmm. It changed by four and four ninths, not by four. So that's why I say don't don't graph this to just graph that red one and then go, oh, I can just move the x-intercept over four. I'll find the x-intercept and move it over by four. Nope, 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 nope. If once you get to this point of neg of 0.9x uh, minus 5.9, you get that, you've made that subtraction, that negative four down to get that 5.9, that negative 5.9. Once you get to that point, if you wanna put it into Desmos and check the x-intercept, that is a viable strategy, absolutely. I just don't think it's a good idea to start with that red one and then go, oh, now I can move it. I've just seen it happen too many times. And no, that's that's not how you find it. All right, but there you go. There is our answer. Six and five ninths, 6.5 repeating, 59 ninths. All those are different ways of saying our same correct answer. Hey guys, if this was helpful or useful in any way, please let YouTube know so I can keep helping you and others like you. Comment, like, share, subscribe, you know the drill. Also, if you're interested in practical or fun math-related items like this math clock or this hopefully humorous t-shirt, click on the links down below to check out my Spreadshop and Etsy stores. Thank you so much for stopping by. Hope you have a great day. See you later. Bye.